Well, good morning, everybody. So today, um, before starting what we, we are going to speak today, let's just make, a, let's say, a picture of what we, at the stage we are, hmm? which, which are the pieces that we have right now, right now. So in this moment, what we have on the table is, on one side, we have our React application that has multiple pages, does very interesting stuff, but is out self-contained. And we have, if we have a look at our exam application or your movies application, we just have everything in the React application. So all the data are within the application and nothing happens and nothing else. Then we have our Express server that has some APIs that is connected to a database and we create this last time if we think about the, uh, the exam example we did in class or your um, movies database, movies library uh, that you did in the lab. And so right now we have these two entities that doesn't speak each other, doesn't know even the existence of the other and doesn't really care about the others. So what we are going to, to do, starting from today uh, and continuing next week, we are going to see how we can make these two entities speak together. So how we can make the React application send request to the Express server and receive responses through clearly the APIs that we have created last time. So our React application will need a way to send requests to the APIs we created. The Express server will see a request to a specific API and if successful will return to the React server the information needed or the error and the React application will then will need to handle that piece of information that is coming out from nowhere, from its own perspective. Because it's not in a component, it's not a change of state, as an internal change of state. It's something that from outside arrives here and needs to be handled here, somewhere, in, a, in some way. So the first things we are going to, to see is how to enable this communication here. Uh, the second things we are going to see is not how to handle internally this, uh, this, this new information that arrives, hmm? because this information arrives at a certain time that we don't know, because yet the, all of this is asynchronous and the server, in our case, will be on the same computer than the React application, but in a real world situation, the server can be uh, somewhere in the world, and we don't know how much time it needs to reply to our request. And so the React, the React application will send a request to some APIs that in our case are our Express server, but there could be other APIs somewhere in the world, we don't really know from, this should be a cloud. We, we don't really know. React doesn't really know if it's a local server, if it's something somewhere in the world, but needs to send a request. At a certain point, after 10 milliseconds, after two seconds, after one minute, after a certain amount of time, 
it will receive a response. And then React needs to process the response and optionally, maybe, update the state. And that update of the state will trigger a render inside React. But this will entail some differences in how React, in how we handle the life cycle of the application in React. And this is the third things we are going to see. The second things that we are going to see, so the first one is how to enable this communication. Uh, the second, third things will be how React can handle these responses that will arrive at a certain time after a certain request. Uh, and the second things we're going to see is uh, what is part, what was part of your reading, that is how to handle the two server problems. Because right now, this is a server, and this is a server, right? So the React application is actually a server on localhost 3000 serving the front end to a browser. Everything is, you know, is on, on our computer, so we don't really see this server serving pages, but actually there is a process serving pages to our browser. And we have a server, serving React. And then we have Express, that is another server that is still on localhost, but on a different port. That is 3001. Mm -hmm. So we need a way to tell the React application the client application hosted in a browser not to get information from its own server as it's normal, it's allowed, but to a different server that is not its own, from a different origin in HTTP, HTTP Jergo. Hmm? Because as you may know, in HTTP, all requests are allowed only from the same origin. So a website, a web application can make, by default, all requests, all HTTP requests that it wants from the same origin. Mm -hmm. So the application running in the browser can request everything that it wants from the server that is serving that application. So React can do all requests that it wants to its own development server. But here we have another server, somewhere else. That again, in this case, happens to be on localhost. Both are on localhost. But one is on the port 3000, and the other one is on the port 3001, so they are different origin. Because the origin is calculated by the URL plus the port, plus the protocol, actually. That's, that's the same protocol in this case. So the difference is the port. And this is the second things that we are going to, to see the two briefly, because you already have, have added the reading, so you already know how to solve this and how this, this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, to enable the third part, we need to solve also this, uh, this mismatch between having two servers, this problem of having two servers doing different things. Okay, so first step the fetch APIs. So the fetch APIs are a series of HTML APIs, not React APIs, just plain JavaScript HTML APIs for sending a synchronous HTTP request from a client in JavaScript to its own server on the same origin again. So in our case, this is more or less the same picture I already uh, show you, we have our uh, React application that at certain points will need to send some requests to a server and receive responses from the server in JSON format, as we have seen. And the way in which we can perform these HTTP requests from any JavaScript application in the browser Again, not specifically to React. You can do also a plain, old plain JavaScript application with get element by D, 
etc., and use fetch, because fetch is actually an HTML5 method to make a synchronous HTTP request, any HTTP request. Get, post, put, delete, whatever you prefer, to a specified um, URL. And the method to do that is called fetch, as the name of the, of the library, of the, the, the resource, and that's typically two parameters. One is the URL of the resource, and the other one is the object that needs to go together with the resource is available, and by default, it performs a GET request. Since it's a HTML5, HTML5 method, it's available in all contexts, since it's attached to the window object, if you recall, in the pre-React world. And since it's asynchronous, it returns a promise. So the fetch operation, the fetch methods will return a promise that will eventually resolve when the load operation, the response, arrives. So we will have a response object that is an appending promise until the promise is fulfilled and we have the entire result. And this promise has a particular characteristics that is always, almost always, fulfilled, even in case of an error sent back on HTTP. Because this is a promise about the network connection, a promise about the request made. So if the request is valid, no matter if it's a 200 OK as a response, or a 404, or a 500, but the HTTP request is fine, then the promise is fulfilled. The only case when the promise is rejected is in case of network errors, not HTTP, not HTTP code errors, but network errors. So it's not possible for any reason not to perform that request on the network. In that case, the promise is rejected. But if there is somewhere, something on the other side of the request that is able to provide a response, whatever the response is, positive, negative, error, etc., the promise will be fulfilled with either the message that you, the response that you were waiting for, or with the error, 500, 404, etc. So how it works and how it looks, here we are, you have uh, the two syntaxes, one with the then and, and catch, let's say, and the other one with the uh, async await. But basically you see it's await, since it returns a promise, fetch the URL that you want to fetch from. In this case, it performs a get to http example.com slash exam.json. When the promise is fulfilled, it, the results of this will go into the response object. And this uh, uh, response object is actually the HTTP response, the entire HTTP response, not only the body, but the entire HTTP response. And from that, we can get the information that we want and typically, we want the JSON, the body, in JSON format. So the Fetch API will have some methods on the response, like .json, that will extract the body from the response in JSON format. So it will convert in a JavaScript object corresponding to the JSON format. And as you can notice, also, this operation is asynchronous and returns a promise. So we, need, we have a promise when we perform the HTTP request, and we have a promise when and if we manipulate the body of the response that we receive. So two promises in a row. The first one to get perform the request, and the second one to parse the body of the response. And after this, 
in this example, response.json will give us in data here a JavaScript object corresponding to the JSON body of the response. From this moment on, we have uh, the results that we want in this variable and we can process it as any JavaScript object as we need it. In this case, it just perform a console.log. Uh, so why do you we have these two promises. Why we need a synchronous call for the fetch and for the dot JSON in this case. That is a question for you. Why we have uh, a synchronous call here? Why we have two promises here? Why we need two promises? Why cannot be synchronous? All of this. In the first case or in the second one? In the first case, we don't know when the, the response will come from the server. If maybe we have a timeout at a certain point, it's maybe it's long, and so we, if this, is syn is, this would be synchronous, we will need to wait, stack the program for, stack the web application for time, hmm? maybe a lot of time, hmm? without the possibility to do anything, so we need, so the designer of the fetch did it asynchronous for this reason, the reason just not to have the web application stuck, waiting for a response. Because we have the network connection in the middle, hmm? so we have latency times, we have processing time on the server, we don't know if this example.com slash exam.json will be a very short response or a very long response. The web application doesn't know this. Know that he has to perform, it has to perform a request, and at a certain point it will receive a response. But how big the response? How much the server we need to process to get the response? Maybe the server is in querying another server to get part of this response and put together information for the web application. And we don't know here. So we need to wait in a synchronous way. The second one, why also this needs to be asynchronous? Here we have the response in our application already. So there is no network connection here. Is like a file? That this is the, the response of the, this is the body of the response we receive. So we receive the HTTP response with the either, the status code, etc., and also the body. So this get the body of the HTTP response. So React already has all the response loaded hmm, because it's, it's coming out from the fetch. So we, need to, we don't need to download anything because the connection is already over in a way. We have the response. We have the full response. We, here we want just to extract the body and parse it as a JSON, but we already have that in an object that is the response object. Uh, we cannot ensure that the body can be parsed as a JSON, but we can do it asynchronously, no? Why we need to do it asynchronously? Yes, we, we use JSON, we, we, we maybe we get error if the body cannot be parsed as a JSON, but why we need to do it asynchronously? Why we need to wait? Because again, yes, exactly. We don't know how big is this JSON. And we don't know how complex is this body. Could be two lines, could be uh, an object with an array, with an object, with an array, with a lot of, mm, a tree of elements. So big and complex. So this will maybe take time to process it 
on the client, mm, all these operations are happening in the browser, mm, so on the computer that we have, mm, that the person visiting our website or web application has. Mm. Again, don't forget that this is HTML5 method, not a React. Mm. So it works for any JavaScript application. Good. Um, the response object, in addition to the body, has some other properties like OK, that give us true if the HTTP response is between 200 and 299, false in the other case. We can also get the status or the status text if we want to go deeper, if we want to know if it's a 404, a 500, whatever. Uh, we can also get all the headers of the response, the final URL of the response, because maybe there are some redirect before, mm, so it's not, maybe it's not the URL we request, maybe it's another URL uh, that provided the response. And, and also a, a body as a property, uh, as a stream of content. Mm. And so here there is an example of, of that. So for instance, you can get the content type from response.eaters dot get content type or date if you want the date that is stored in the HTTP response. Mm. Or you see here the status is for 404, the status text is clearly not found, it's the status text associated to, to the status, uh, and the URL in this case, yes, in this example, is exactly the URL, the, the URL that is made from the fetch, as is often happens. Mm. So these are response headers. Um, so how to handle errors with the fetch? So since the promise, the fetch promise is, is rejected only for network connection errors, so non-HTTP errors, uh, and any HTTP status, including the ones that have errors like 500, uh, returns a promise as is fulfilled, we need to perform a check of errors manually, let's say. So the most common case is to check response.ok. Given that response.ok is 200 and family of 200, we can check if the response is ok and then process the response correctly. Else, so if response.ok is true, then we can process the response because it's the, what we, we wanted else we are in any other cases that typically are error cases, not all, but mo most, most of them. And so we can maybe access status, status text, and see which are the specific error and how to handle it. Mm -hmm. But we need to do it manually. Because again, the promise is just rejected when we have a net no, a non-HTTP error, typically a network error. So here there is, for instance, an example of how to handle the, the error. Uh, but again, if, if response, else, something else. Uh, actually, the fetch as a second object, as was mentioned to you, a series, an object that is properties for performing the request. In the example so far, we see a fetch to a get, to get a, a specific address, but we, need, we maybe want to do a post or a delete or add a body to the request. Hmm? All things that we can do in, in, in a query, in HTTP query. And so the second object of the fetch is an optional object for specifying all these things, the method, Post, put, get, delete. By default, is get, but we can specify the headers if we want to provide some headers in the request, the body of the request, any credential mm, that we want to attach to the uh, request if needed, etc. Mm. So, a series of properties that map the properties that uh, HTTP request can have, mm, including the methods. Mm, the, the ones that we are going to use most are clearly the methods, the body, 
and sometimes the headers to provide in a post request, for instance, also the, the resource to create on the server if we think about our examples. And so here, for instance, there is an example of a post with a JSON content. It's always the same. There is a fetch, there is a URL, HTTP URL, and then there is an object. And these objects are, in this case, a three, prop a three properties. The method, that is a post, as a string. The headers, that is, you see, an object. In this case, content type application JSON to say to the server that the request coming is a post with a body, and that body is a JSON in the JSON format. And then there is the body itself. And this is, we have seen, we have always seen the opposite operation of this, how to get a JSON file and create a JavaScript object. This is the JavaScript way to do the opposite. Get, get a JavaScript object and create a JSON text, a string in JSON. JSON.stringify the object will get the object in JavaScript and create the corresponding JSON structure as a string so that we can use it in this case, we can use it in the body that we need just a string to pass it. So we need to convert the object in JavaScript explicitly in JSON format to send it as JSON. And then there is dot then, dot catch, and we need to handle the promise after this operation. So it's another object with properties that we may want to specify. Again, most of, in, in this course, and typically most of the, the most common properties are methods, headers, and body, because typically we want to perform also operation not get operation with some specified headers and with a body when it's a post or a put. <laughs> Uh, the response body, I told you that we can do response.json to get the response body in JSON format. Uh, we also have other methods in addition to .json uh, that is here. We also have a .text that get the body and try to get it as plain text. Uh, and other methods like form data, uh, blob, array buffer, etc. But all of these, well, all of these return a promise, but with this important catch. The response body can be parsed once. You cannot do response.json and then in the next line response.text. Because when you consume the, body, the response for the first time, that body is consumed and not, more, not available anymore. Mm? So you can consume the response body just once with these methods. So you have to choose. Do you want text or do you want JSON or do you want other things? And then when you consume the response body, it's over. You cannot, you cannot re-manipulate, re-parse it another time. You have something in an object, and then you can continue manipulating that object that came from the response body. But you cannot do, again, response.json and in the next line, response.text, because the first line will consume the response body, and you cannot manipulate it anymore from the response body. Well, and clearly you can also do sequential fetch. Just fetch the first resource, await for parsing the response, get any information from that response, and maybe call another fetch, but nothing really strange. And you can also do parallel fetch with promises.all. If you remember, promises.all get a series of promises or function that returns a promise, like fetch, and perform them, perform all of them, and return when all of them 
are resolved. So you can also do multiple fetch in and waiting for the execution of all of them with promises at all. So all the methods that we have seen with promises, since this returns a promise, can be applied here. Mm? Even depending to on what you want to do. So finally, uh, the fetch is the standard uh, method in, HTM in HTML5. Uh, we also have the opportunity, again, in plain JavaScript, nothing really specific to uh, React, to use other libraries. Other libraries exist that does things more complex or will hide some details or will add some facility, uh, facilitation to the uh, fetch, to what the fetch uh, library can do. And one of the most common alternative to fetch is this Axios library that um, has other functions like the possibility to cancel an HTTP request. So you send an HTTP request, you can cancel that request before receiving a response. This is not really possible with the fetch, but with this library you can do these things. You can also set out explicitly a timeout in the response and handle the timeout in the response Etc. Performs automatic JSON conversion. You don't have to call .json like in fetch, but it performs automatically if you want it, etc. Mm? So this is a library that is a more complex version of fetch if you want to see, but it's an external library, not standard. Mm? The standard <coughs> way to do fetch in HTML5 is to, to perform queries, HTTP requests in HTML5 is the fetch library that in our case is more than what we need. But this is something that if you want, you can also use as a more advanced way, a more sophisticated way uh, of doing the same things, uh, doing HTTP requests and handling responses. Any questions so far? Seems not. Okay. So, have you read the reading? Yes. They can ask you questions about the reading. Yes? No? Maybe? Maybe. So, just do, let's, let's just do a quick recap, a very quick recap. So, wh well, what is this two server problem? I already mentioned to you today, but what is the two server problem? The, the last part is a solution, not a possible solution, not, not part of the problem, yeah. The problem, which is the two server problem? I also mentioned to you before, half an hour ago. Where are the two servers? One is the React development server that we are using, and the other one, it's in our case, the expert server, okay. And why this is a problem? Because they are not, not able to communicate each other and they are providing their own services. But why they are not able to communicate each other? Yes, we need to configure them, but why we need to configure them? Why by default they cannot? speak each other. Yeah. 
Yes, we can deploy that. So actually, it's not really a problem with the server. So a server can communicate with another server. Do we agree with this statement? Because a server is actually a computer program in Node, like in Express, and a server can call HTTP requests, can do HTTP requests to whatever it wants. I mean, it's not a problem of the server per se. So a server, if we have two Express servers, the first Express server can speak with the second Express server and vice versa. We don't have any problem of configuration, etc. Where is the problem here? It's called two servers, but there is By default, as a security principle, course is disabled. Uh, what does it mean? Course is disabled. It's not a one server that cannot. Uh, server can uh, do whatever they want. Because a browser cannot make a request to a server that is not currently the one that is providing the pages. So always remember that when we launch the React application, what, what happens when we launch a React application? When we type npm start, what happens? We launch the React server, and it's fine. And? Sorry, I didn't. Okay, so, so we, 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 when, when we type npm start, we launch the server. The, the internal React server, the development server, it's a development server launches and it's fine then the browser opens and perform a get to the root uh, path of that development server and what happens in that moment that we don't we don't see we, we see just the results but what happens in react in the server The React server receives the request from the browser, and it provides, it, it builds the application, actually, uh, because the browser is not able to parse JSX files. Browser just speak HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Whatever is not HTML, JavaScript, and CSS is not something that the browser can understand. So the server, React internally, the React server, Parses, actually Babel, it's a library that is installed, parses the React application, convert it in a format that is understandable by a browser, and respond, an answer to the request, reply to the request made by the server with the first page, that in our case is all the page of the application, the web application. Just React is single page application because we just give everything to the browser. And the browser is doing all the work. And the server is just there to launch everything and to provide the first page that is actually also the entire application in this case. So here, back here to the problem, which is the problem? The problem is that the React application, compiled, etc., that is running the browser, can only perform HTTP request to the server that is providing itself for security reasons, as he was saying. So if the React application is served by localhost 3000, by default, the only way, the, the only destination of request that we can have is localhost 3000, nothing else. This is called the same origin policy. A client, a front-end application can only perform requests on the same origin. 
we have another server that is not in the same origin, right? Why is it not in the same origin? Because it's on a different port. It's localhost 3001. And this is enough to qualify as a different origin. So for security reason, we cannot, a browser cannot, by default, perform a request to a different origin. What he was saying, we need to configure cores. Cores stand for cross-origin. The C and the O stand for cross-origin, because we actually do requests from one origin to another origin, so across different origins. And so we have this problem. And we also have three possible solutions that are reported in these slides. So if you are curious, you can read all of them. Uh, the one that we are going to use is the first one. So two independent servers. We will keep two independent servers as we have. We're not going to change anything on that logical setup, but we're going to configure one of them to accept requests from a different origin. And which is the one that we're going to, well, it's written there, but which is the one that we're going to, to configure to accept requests from a different origin? The React server or the Express server? the Express server. Hmm? And then we have other two ways to do that, to solve this problem. Uh, the first one is actually to use, uh, so React, the development server in React as a proxy embedded in it. So if we want, we can enable the proxy within the server. And so having the server the React server passing the information to the other server without configuring anything on any server. Uh, this is another possibility. Uh, but clearly this is strongly related to the fact that we are going to use, we are using the React development server. So until we are in development, this solution works. If we stop to, be, to use the React development server, we go in production, hmm? this solution doesn't work anymore. So it's fine for development, but not general so as a solution. Uh, this one instead doesn't really care if it's React or any other server somewhere. Hmm? And then there is but also this is reported in the slides. And to enable the proxy, you just need to add one line to the package.json of the React application. Also very simple. And then there is the third one, that is the solution that you would use uh, probably for putting uh, React in, de in deploy, to deploy React, to deploy React application. Because if you deploy a React application, you are not going to use the developer server, clearly. So you, you need to get rid of the development server, but you need a, a server in that moment because you're not using the development server anymore. And so what you, you will typically do is to use, you can use the same server or another server hmm, that host both the HTTP requests, the APIs, and this, the bundled React application. Hmm? So the bundled React application is uh, a build of the React application just for deploy purposes hmm? to be released that hmm, with compress file, uh, etc. Hmm? So this is a third solution. And all of these are in this set of slides. If you are curious, you can go ahead and read it. Uh, we will use, as we were mentioning, the and you already have read all of these, um, the course solution uh, that you need to install. It's not written here. You need to install in Node uh, the course library. So npm e install course. 
and then you can import it const course equal require const as always and then you can enable course so this line here this line here is to enable cross origin request for the server for all the URL that make a request and for all the root of the server it's really a turn everything on hmm, with that line and how is, how is written here and let me highlight it another, one, another time this is really bad from a security perspective because you're opening your server to whatever request in the world hmm? so what you, you want to do is to enable course just for some APIs and just from some origins hmm? the one that you think that are the good one like yours hmm? but this line here enable everything for everybody in the world so every client can perform a request with that line to this server. Um, you can, let me see if it's reported here, not, it's not. But course, we were going to do it. You can have uh, options here. So for, for, this for this course, it's fine, enable everything, because we, we keep everything in development. But not do the deploy of, of some things like this. Uh, you can specify there as options which are the origin that you are accepting from so in our case we can say we want to accept a request only from localhost 3001 because it's our react application so if we have a localhost 8080 we are not going to accept a request from that because it's not listed in one of the acceptable origin that we want uh, and then the slides go, go, go on with the React development server and with the other methods if you want to to have a look at that but we are not going to use any of these in the course okay so let's try to to see it in practice both things course and fetch without react for the moment because for react as you as I mentioned to you before this is point one and two that is what I mentioned before how to enable the communication between a client server a different server and uh, how to solve the two servers problems we need in react we also need to understand how to manage the internal changes that are um, as a consequence of receiving information in a random moment in the future hmm? so let's do step by step let's do is it as a simple javascript application right so we have our react score server that is exactly the same server that we had last time without anything else with no course, etc. Oh, I just added, if you have a look, the, uh, the validation. So basically validation is this. In a put request, I added express validator and I say that the code has a length, minimum max, score is between 18 and 31, and date is um, of a specific format a validation from the put request that arrives in the server as a parameter between the url and the arrow function for parsing requests and responses that's the only change i put it actually this should be 30. no 31 it's correct um, and that's it so it's the same server we did last time so let's create a new folder here and not here 
and let's call it simple simple application hmm? and let's go in this simple application so we are going to do a plain JavaScript application hmm? uh, so we need HTML JavaScript we don't need CSS but most importantly in this moment we cannot process it as we did in the first weeks of the course when we created an HTML page with some JavaScript double click on the page and it opened the browser hosted served by file by the file system we need server here otherwise the fetch will not work in with file we cannot with serving with the frame system fetch will not work so what we need is to create a, a node project that we can call it no wrong folder um, we need to go in simple application and here create a project whatever and we need to install Express and we need we already know we need to install course So we have our React score server that we are going to, we don't need course, never mind. So here we don't need course because this is the application, the client application, the equivalent of React. Uh, so here we need to have a index.js file that is our server and then we will need probably to have um, index.html and uh, app.json file and that's it and we will have our server index.js that will serve the index.html that will call the app.json that will do the fetch to the server to our react score server so this is the Um, this is the Express server. Mm. So what we let's do a recap. What we need to write here to enable an Express server. We want to write an Express server here. So what we need to write. We need to import Express, that's sure. Uh, do you see is large enough in the bottom? So, okay. Then we have to initialize const app Express. Then we can specify a port if we want. And we can use 3000. Hmm? Our React score server is on 3001. And this is our equivalent of the React application, so we can keep the 3000 port. And then we need to. Well, we, yeah, we, we don't use middleware, just for the example. app.listen, we need to activate the server. So app.listen, um, port, and we can specify the message of the server that is activated. So console.log, so server ready. Let's keep it short in this case. Okay, and so this is, yes.
So this index.js is what we called in the React score server, server.js. We are creating a plain JavaScript, a normal HTML application, but we cannot double click on it. We need to have a server. So I call it index because the package.json by default to call it index.js and I didn't want to, I, I created this in this way. But you can give it whatever name you want, clearly. And this is the file that launches server. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we need. We never did this, actually. But what, what we, we put, typically, before listening, before app.listen, also in the React server, the APIs. In this case, we don't have an API. But we have a root that is the one that will provide the HTML page. So as in the past, app.get root request response. That is the same. Because don't forget that, again, it's the server that when receive a request on a root, in this case, it serve the index.html file. It serve to the browser the file. And so we are making it explicit here what normally happens when we launch React, for instance. So we need to serve a file. So REST, we know that we can do everything with the request or response. Send file. And which file we need to send to the browser? To, to, one, to the one that call this URL, index.html. And here we need to specify also this. And we need also to specify this. As an object, root, colon, underscore, underscore, so double underscore, dear name. That is because the send file wants the full path of the file on the disk. So this is a way to specify which is the full path on disk. And then, yes, actually we need a middleware. That is the middleware for providing uh, static files. Uh, again, we can use their name as the folder. We, 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 uh, which static file do we have here? Not index.html, since we send it with the rest which is the, the other. Now here we don't have React. We are, we are creating a plain JavaScript application. HTML plus JavaScript, like old fashioned uh, HTML plus JavaScript with document.get element by D, et cetera, which is the static file that we have here. the JavaScript file, the app.js file. Because for a server, is a static file. It's a file that needs to be provided to the browser. The HTML file is provided here. So since we are providing it specifically, we, it's, we, we don't need this for the index, but actually also the index is a static file in this, in the sense, but we provide it separately. So we, if we just have the index.html, we don't need this row. If we just add the index.html. But since we have other static file, like app.js in this case, or CSS file that we don't have, or images that we don't have. So everything else that is files that needs to, provide, to be provided to the browser, then we need to use that middleware to specify where these static files are. 
and the, in our case, they are just all in the same folder. That is the folder of the project. So this is our server. We don't need to, to do anything else on our server. We just want a server that serve that single HTML page. So what we can do now is to write this HTML page. Suggestions. HTML page. The doc type, yes. Before writing the I cannot write doc type. Yes, I can, but let's let's keep the doc type. Let's go HTML. Then head. Then after the head, body. Good. And actually we don't have this is just an example, so we don't have a lot. We, we can skip a lot of, of things. We just keep it at the bare minimum. We can maybe set a title and say that this is uh, the fetch example. And then in the body, we can add uh, h1 just to see if the page is provided um, with, uh, I don't know, testing, fetch. and uh, maybe a paragraph. With an ID that is a result. And what we need also here in this file. To import, to import app.js, exactly. So script, defer, src, app.js, and we also have done with the index HTML. Hmm? So an empty file basically with an header, and then we we keep a space to put the results, the raw results of our app.js, our fetch. We are doing this to, to test the fetch. Let's not forget that. And finally, our app.js. What do we need to write? First thing first. Use straight. Okay. Now, we want to do the fetch, right? So, uh, we want to fetch the get, get all exams on our React score server. Mm? So what do we need to write? Fetch, yes, Be before fetch, we, we need to, to store the, the results somewhere, no? Or the fetch, so. Const for sure. Response. What do we get from the fetch? The response. So let's keep it again minimum. So we, we are going to get the list of exams in JSON and we, we need and we are going to put it as text in the HTML page, as a raw text, without any manipulation. We just want to experiment with the fetch, not to to do a, a, a real, complete uh, JavaScript application. Mm -hmm. Because we need to do this in React then, so. Uh, so here, fetch. Mm -hmm. Fetch of what? What we're going to write here? The URL, that is. HTTP, localhost, Three thousand and one, and then where API slash exams, if I remember properly, and then this is not complete as a line. I wait because it returns a promise. We 
we should. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, we can do fetch dot then, uh, or we can do it. Oops. Not media, whatever it is, but we can do it in this way. We cannot have a wait, just if you didn't follow up for a moment, we cannot have an await without an async. And we cannot have a wait in the first level, so we need to include all of that in an async function and then call the async function. Or use then and catch, dot then. But in this way it's more linear because also what we are going to write here. We, we will need another then. If we go with the then way, we would have fetch.then and then another things.then. So we will have a multiple alignment inside, multiple indentation. What we are going to write here sorry. Before that, yes, that is this correct. Constant data, let's say, um, await, uh, response. We want to put it as plain text. So we are not going to write JSON, but we're going to write text. That works in the same way, just to give you text. And the response is a string, plain string, instead of manipulating in JSON and get it in a JavaScript object. Uh, but before that, here, what we should write also? If response is okay. And to check if the response, if the request is okay or it gives an error, 500, 404, etc. So if response.okay, then we can do this. Okay, so now we have, if everything is go well, we have all our exams in text or format in data. And now we need to add it to the page. So what we need to write? We need to add this data into the HTML page. So exactly. Document dot get uh, query selector, it's the same. Uh, of a result, right, dot inner text, since it's text, equal data. We just need to put everything in the page to see the results. We don't, we can do something more fancy than that, but we just want to experiment with fetch. Hmm? So we can, for instance, get it, the response as a JSON and then iterate on the object and then mm, uh, on the array and then for each element in the array, put it in a table, et cetera, like we did. Mm, and like we are probably are going to do in React. But right now we just want to test if everything is fine. So let me save this and let me start this server. And it's called index.js. Mm, server ready. So let's open a browser, let's close this, and also this, and let's open a browser. So the application is running, because we see testing fetch, that it was the header. Uh, we don't see here any errors, hmm? what we missed. 
Why we don't see the exams? The other server is not running. That's good. Um, so the other server is React score server. And we can start it as before. Oh, I need to install everything, sorry. Yes. So let's open the console. So you see here, maybe you don't see, but here it say failed to load the resource connection refused because the server is actually not running. The other server is not running. And now we can start it. Server started in localhost 3000. So let's refresh this. Okay, sorry. It shouldn't have worked, and indeed it doesn't, um, because I tested it yesterday, so same, so the browser was caching uh, the, the information. Um, so if you, uh, I did, uh, if you do it, you should see something like this. So no content and an error in the console. I just refresh empty the cache of the browser, because I was testing it yesterday, so um, it shouldn't work. Right? Why shouldn't work? As it is not working. We need to enable course. Otherwise, we have the problem of the two servers. And indeed, if you read the message here, it's already told you. It say access to fetch localhost 3001 API exams from origin localhost 3000 has been blocked by course policy. No access control, a low origin header is present in the request, blah, blah. And then it gives you a network error connection, and then it gives you a series of other errors. That is the browser not being able to process all the response, etc. But the first line is the one that we, we care most. That say, you cannot call localhost 3001 from a browser from an application that's served from localhost 3000. So what we need to do, we need to go, we don't need to change anything in our new simple application, but we need to, to go here in our React Core server and enable course. So we need to install course, first of all, we need to import course require course and we need to say app.use course. Okay. And in this case, we are opening access to all the origins to use our server. So if we do that and we run it, and we refresh this, we see that Our application doesn't give any error anymore, and it works. 
And these are the information that we have in the database from our server from last time. In just in plain text, because it's what we are parsing to. Now, I told you that this is not so good to open everything, so let's try to restrict at least to localhost 3001. And to do that, we can specify before this line an object that are the options for course. So we can call it course options, for instance. That is an object, actually. And we just can specify which is the origin from where we get the information. So we can say origin, which is the only allowed origin in our case. Localhost, 3000. Yes, the origin is protocol plus URL plus, plus domain and subdomains plus port. Hmm? If we just write localhost without the port, which is the port that is get? 80. Hmm? So if you write localhost and stop it, just accept the request from 80. And we don't have a server running on localhost 80. Hmm? We have a server running on localhost 3000. Uh, and then if, we, if you look at the uh, course documentation, uh, it suggests to add uh, options and other items that is called, let me see, options success status. Let's say 200. Mm -hmm. And this is just for a legacy browser. So when you get uh, a success status in course, you always get 200. But in previous, start, in, in old browsers, you don't. Mm -hmm. So this is to force 200 also for a legacy browser. Not really needed for, for this year's Chrome and Firefox, but for legacy reason, they suggest it to add it doesn't change a lot. Uh, if we save this and we use this as a parameter here, hmm, we just restricted this to um, this specific host. Hmm? So if we stop it and restart it, hmm, we should see, uh, let me do with empty cache and reload so that we are sure not to, to keep uh, all the information is still working. If we say, okay, it's 2003. Hmm? That is not something that we have. And we save it and we restart the server and we do an empty cache and reload. We are back in the previous state hmm? in which you say you cannot perform this request because the only valid origin is localhost 3003 and you are 3000 and one and you are 3000 so you cannot perform this request so that option really work because otherwise we, we don't get this error so restoring 3000 here makes everything working again. Hmm? So this is the simple application with fetch and course. Now after the break we are going to move these into React, so the fetch into React, while the server that we set up with course will be the same because it's actually our React score server with access to the, the exams, etc. Mm? So that change that we made to the server will still be the same. We need to do something like this, but in React with one more thing that is the use effect hook. 
But all of these after 15 minutes of break.